Javier Fortuna, he's a stablemate, a former middleweight champion, Sergio Martinez, undefeated in his 27 professional fights, only a draw and a no decision tomorrow, and otherwise perfect record. He's got a lot of pop, as we said, 18 of his 25 wins have come by way of knockout. He had a long amateur career back in his native Dominican Republic and was on that country's national team for three years. He can occasionally get wild and kind of forget about his defense, but he promises that tonight he's been working on defensive skills and we will see a different Javier Fortuna. So Steve, talk about the keys to victory for this guy. Will do, Barry. Fortuna needs room to punch. He operates best at long range. Fortuna lays back, then suddenly erupts with a flurry. The result has been a highlight reel of chaos. And finally, Fortuna sometimes reaches with his straight left and leads with a left uppercut from too far away. Can't do that tonight. And the other half of this matchup, Abner Koto. Yes, he's the second cousin of Miguel Koto. A long amateur career for him and included 285 fights, many coming against top level amateur competition. Koto's been stepping up the caliber of, comp of opponent that he's had over the last couple of years. He's two and two in his last four fights, but those two losses, forgivable losses to be sure, against Francisco Vargas and Omar Figueroa, two undefeated fighters. He comes off the best win of his career. It was a 10 round split decision against Jerry Belmontes. Cotto may be a little bit short in the power punching department, but he can make up for it with his overall skills and very good movement. So, Steve, talk about the keys to victory for Abner Cotto. Well, Barry, you mentioned movement. Cotto's hard to hit flush when he steps away as his opponent punches. Cotto isn't likely to outbox Fortuna from the outside. He needs to move forward and attack. So finally, Cotto's had some rough first rounds. Fortuna's had some big first round KOs, so watch out for that first round. All right, with that, it's time to get started. Started an evening chock full of boxing action from here in Chicago. For the introduction to the fighters, we take it to the center of the ring for the first time tonight. And the ring announcer, Thomas Triber. Thomas. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to this Showtime Boxing Special Edition here at the UIC Pavilion in Chicago, Illinois. We get the action started with 10 rounds of boxing in the junior lightweight division, and it is being brought to you by Warriors Boxing in association with Samson Boxing, Kodo Promotions, Box Promotions, and Showtime, along with their great sponsor, the Crea, Servicios, Financieros, our three judges assigned, scoring on a 10-point must system will be Mauro Di Fiori, Alfredo Gallardo, and Jerry Jacobko. When the bell rings, our referee in charge, the third man in the ring will be Lou Hall. Introducing to you first, fighting tonight out of the blue corner. He's wearing green with gold and blue and weighed in at 130 and a quarter pounds. Coming to us from Aguas Buenas, Puerto Rico. He brings a professional record of 18 wins, two defeats, with eight wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Abner Pin Corto. And his opponent across the ring fighting tonight out of the red corner. He's wearing gold and black trunks and weighed in at 129 and a half pounds. Hailing from La Romana and La República Dominicana, he is undefeated with 25 wins, one draw, one no contest, with 18 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Javier El Avejo. Hey guys, let's get this cleaned up before we start, okay? Gentlemen, we don't over the instructions of lock room. Protect yourself at all times. Listen to my commands all time. Touch them up and step back their corners. Hello. You take a look at the numbers. Look at how much 
Fortuna put on 17 and a half pounds. When this fight was made, I thought Cotto might do well to be on the inside, but Fortuna is five pounds bigger, presumably stronger. He's really rehydrated. The big no. guy. And the rules no. here in Illinois, the uh, unified rules, no, no standing, any kind of no knockdown rule. Only the ref can stop the fight. The fighter cannot be saved by the bell of any round. The fight becomes official after four rounds, Barry. With that, we are set to go. Our first oh. fight of three this evening. Fortuna, a guy who likes to get guys out of there in a hurry. Let's see if he just gets right on Cotto. Fortuna in the gold and black, Cotto in the gold and green. This is a very small ring, too, and I think that could possibly, Raul, be a factor in this fight. Oh, absolutely. I think that's going to uh, favor Fortuna. He's Hunt the guy going to come forward, but uh, Fortuna is Stop! really doesn't have an inside game. Stop! He's better at, at a little bit at long range Stop! when he's right at the right Don't distance. Hold. That's when he Go. connects with Box. his power shots. So he can't just jump on top of the guy where he could smother. Ricardo would sm smother his punches. He's got to find the right distance. That right hand shook him. There was a right hand and the legs wobbled, and that should be a knockdown, but they're going to say no, it was, it was pushed down. Box. But that right hand by Fortuna actually staggered Koto. And another good right hand by Fortuna. Punch out! Punch out! Stop! I think Stop! Koto needs to wear him down in his early rounds by Don't making hold. a miss and just cover Box. up. It's a little bit cold in there. Looks like he didn't warm up too well in the C4 tuna. He, he jumped him right on him as soon as the bell rang. He's looking for a knockout. Straight a little bit low. Fortuna doesn't always fight this way. He doesn't always come directly forward, but I think he senses that this is the best way to start and the best way to fight in his ring. Punch out! 16 feet. And Koto was hoping that he could take Fortuna Punch into the deep, deep rounds, and that would be his Break. best chance. Right! And we should point out that. Time out. Listen to me. Listen to me. Don't hold. Let's go. Box! Do we have to listen to the ref too? No, I don't know. I heard that. But uh, you see that Fortuna is a southpaw. Kudo has fought very yeah. close out. Another good right two. hand. That's where Kudo's in trouble. He doesn't need to take risks like that. When Fortuna right. throws, he needs to cover up. Catch right. some of his punches on his gloves, his shoulders, his arms. Or give him some good defense. Huh. Make a miss. But it's too early in the fight for Cotto to take risks like that. Good body shot again with the left hand. Keep him up! Cotto misses the right hand. Fortuna misses with three shots. This is a small victory if Cotto can get out of this next 30 seconds. Yes. He couldn't with uh, Omar Pantrita Figueroa. Yeah. You would think he would have learned from that fight. So, you know, you, when you fight up a bomber like... Punch out! Fortuna, you try to Punch survive out! the first couple of rounds. You don't have to take that many risks like he's taking right now. Punch out! And Jerry Bamakis also had a hurt in the first round. That, that was a warning sound, but it sounded like a bell, didn't it? Punch out! That was a bell. What are you doing? Are you doing a little bit heavier? Hay que tocarlo, tocarlo, está yendo por, está soñando mucho los golpes tuyos, pero se está bajando. Porque esto, cuando tú estás buscando, buscando, tócalo con el jazz, toca con el jazz, tú estás haciendo bien. Ya mismo tú lo coges, tú lo tocaste ahí. Mueve la cabeza, usa el jazz, pero no lo, no lo, no lo tiene la cabeza. The trainer, a familiar boxing name, his brother, of course, cruiserweight champion for about 100 years. I think he won the title 73 times. I think so. Fortuna. And again, the size of the ring comes into play because Koto back 
backed up and two steps he was against the rope. Yeah, no place to hide. Bruno threw only 31 touches in the first round. He's being overwhelmed right now. Punch out! Punch out! And there's a couple shots to the back of the hand. That's completely illegal. That corner. should cost a point. Two corner. One. Two. Three. Four. No. That is 100% wrong. Seven. Eight. Yeah, that, was clearly, that was clearly behind the head. Two, two shots. In, in fact, it should be... It should be Punch it back and head one it. point. Punch it back and head one point. Punch it back and head one point. Punch it back at one point. That's the first time I've ever seen you speak this. Don't hit behind the head. Well, the only Go. Way, Five. I mean, I'm trying to justify referee Hall's actions. The only way is if he's acknowledging that Cota landed that punch behind the head, but the knockdown is from a different punch, the punch before that. That's the only thing I can think of. Otherwise, it makes no sense. I'm trying to punch do out! I thought it was just 100% wrong. Actually, I think there was more than one punch in the back there. Not to jump on Lou Hall, but uh, researching his work. Right. He's never done an eight or a ten right. fight in his career. Actually, uh, Fortuna's getting a little bit wild, and Cotto wants him to get wild. He wants him to open up, get careless, and Cotto needs to fire down the middle with straight shots. Well, it was one of the things we talked about right at the beginning is that he has a tendency to you know, neglect his defense and just throw wild shots. And that's what's happening. Interesting way to score with both the not that and the point that does. Yes, it is. Hey. Don't push. Come on. Come on, do the same thing as the goal. We take a look at action for round two. Now watch Kodo. There's a punch to the ear, but then clearly two punches to the back of the head, rapid punches. That's clearly what caused the knockdown. Sorry, ref, you can't have it both ways. Watch again. All right, that punch might have been... Those last two are the ones that send Fortuna down. Now, the ref can't have it both ways. He can't score a knockdown and then take a point away for a foul. Because if it's a foul, as Barry pointed out right away, it's not a knockdown. Yeah, I mean, that's just wrong. I mean, it's just simply wrong. Scored that round nine. nine. Because, uh, you do have to score the knockdown as a knockdown, even if you disagree with it, because that's the way boxing works. Right. And then a point taken away. Box. So that's the third round. It's already been an interesting fight. For two, again, right back on top of Cole. Fortuna's really right. putting a lot of pressure right. on himself. Right. And he's trying really hard to knock Cotto out. You gotta break Cotto down. He still had an extensive amateur career and he's fought some good guys. So, you know, when he, when Fortuna's feeling so pressured, he can telegraph a lot of shots. And Cotto sees it coming. Just to explain my score at 9 9 the second round. Fortuna gets an extra point to knock down, but loses a point for the point deduction. So I give him nine points. Cotto, the fourth dominant, excuse me, that's Cotto. Fortuna dominated the ground, so I'm not scoring eight for him, I'm scoring nine for him. That's how I got to nine, nine for him. That just confused everybody more. I have a stupid. Maybe that comes from years of work. See, another guy that Fortuna is a little bit more relaxed. Has his jab hand down and he's popping his jab, giving him head movement, making a miss. He's, he's letting things flow a lot easier now than the first two rounds. The first two rounds, it looked like he was in a hurry to get him out of there, knock him out. He's punching hard with every shot. Cotter was 
final status of the ruling of some sort. You ready? You have your time. Well, the right arm of Fortuna was around the neck of Cardo. That probably brought the punch down lower. Okay, stay there. The Our referees will not rule that as time a low blow because Box. of the push down on the neck. But 
been given away for a two to react to Barry. The referee didn't have much of a choice. No point to that, correct? No, I did not see a point to that. For two to jump it all over Cotto, but he's still wild. A lot of those have been caught in the gloves of Cotto. Left hand back through. I understand which Cotto is running in this. He's making a miss. He's not, not throwing any punches back. Every now and then he's to throw a lead. Lead right. Right! This is a pretty dirty fight. It is, and I think for two right now. Too much emotion. Yeah, he's, well, he's doing all this punching role. Cotto's yeah. making, making, uh, doing well defensively, but not answering. So who do you get around to? Fortuna. Absolutely, yes. I noticed Fortuna get a little bit dirty. He threw a left hand and he pushed to the bottom. Keep him up! Shot right at the belt line. You can't see Fortuna's name. So the uh, waistband it may not be an illegal punch. Looks like Fortuna almost went to a knee there. He's making me dizzy, he's jumping around so much. That was another strange round. And now Toto goes down. <laughs> Sent to a neutral corner. Cotto is still down. Well, we'll see in the repeat how he went down. It was like a delayed reaction. It, it seemed to me like his trainer told him to be, yeah, go, go down. down. I mean, yes. <laughs> Let's not beat around the bush. That's what his trainer told him. Go right down. Now. A full minute for right now. Now, we're going to get a chance to see this. And, uh, I thought Come flapping only happened in the NBA. In soccer. In soccer. In soccer. Come in. Right. One point. Okay. One point deduction. One point. We're hitting after the bell. One point for hitting after the bell. In the same round, one round for hitting after the bell. Strange, strange fight. And Cotto is staying in this fight just by the fact that points are being taken away. That's one point right, for Let's see now what the happens. Bell. The round's over, is that correct? That punch missed. Oh, missed it completely. <laughs> hey, go down, go down. <laughs> Oh! <laughs> that is comical, guys. Yes, it is. And hey, the fans <laughs> must be seeing it on the. Uh... There we go. Go down. It worked. They took a point away. That's right. Wow. Accepting the award. <laughs> Hold back. Hold back. Now, oh. This could really get ugly. Huh? Well, it, yeah, I agree about it. It's getting silly now. Pretty, but the last part of it was very effective. I'm, I'm 
just glad and grateful that the fight ended definitively because yes. a lot of stuff was going on there that could have really messed up a definitive ending, and that Absolutely. was a definitive ending. Absolutely. fight Barry and the deductions and the uh, Academy Award and everything else the fact of the matter is Fortuna scored a one much knockout yes he did and which we said he was capable of and he showed you he was and that's against a pretty good opponent I mean after Cotto quality opponent here are the numbers Steve yeah the, the uh, big factor here Cotto just not landing enough punches he threw less than half as many as Fortuna did the power shots 88 to 36 a pretty high connect percentage of power shots for Fortuna but basically what it came down to were a bunch of deductions and then one shot one good clean shot caught Cotto just kind of stepping in I believe and it was a no doubt about it right on the chin and there's a look at Cotto obviously that very displeased with himself. Looked like he was just maybe starting to get into the fight. Yeah, just by surviving against a wild uh, offensive fighter like Fortuna is somewhat successful right there, but he never threw any punches. I don't think he won any rounds on his own. So maybe he would have come out in the second half of the fight, maybe not, but basically Fortuna established his dominance and his intent from round one and kept it through round five. No question. Heck of a punch, Raul. All right, this is round two where ridiculously referee Lou Hall ruled a knockdown on what was clearly a rabbit punch. Low blow. And now another low blow. And then you see the right knee of Fortuna go up and he goes crashing to the canvas. And there a right hook after the bell that misses. And the referee and the uh, trainer. Nobody told him to go down then. It was an of punch. One more time, we know that Fortuna has one punch power, and there it is. Yeah, right there, Fortuna showed that when he gets in the right distance, the, you know, he gets the right leverage, and he shows that he's a one-punch knockout artist. You don't need to crowd himself too much. He's got to fight that right distance between his fighter. That's when he's dangerous, right there. Yeah, he got beautiful leverage on yeah. sure. yeah, him. And I'll tell you, you know who the happiest guy in the world is right now that this fight is over? The referee. No question. No question, because nobody's going to look at him. Nobody's going to judge him. Let's go to Thomas. Try to get we'll this official. Thomas. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the official time. One minute, 32 seconds of round number five. Our referee in charge, Lou Hall, reaches the count of 10. Your winner by way of knockout and still undefeated, Javier El Abejón Fortuna. So there's your winner, knockout in the fifth round. He is still a work in progress, but you gotta like his power. Well, one down, two to go on this triple header. Still to come tonight, the main event, Andre Fomfara hoping to delight his adopted hometown fans when he faces Dudu Ngumbu. Up next, Tomoki Kameda and Alejandro Hernandez squaring off for the WBO Bantamweight Championship. But first, we want to let you know about a new show doc, an explosive portrait of the man behind the greatest fraud in sporting history.